You know what? I heard a youngster say the other day, and this is real, I heard somebody, he's 21 years old, and I'll never forget he said this. He said, everything I do is right. Who's to say what's wrong and what's right? I can't do nothing wrong. I got to take care of myself. I have to survive. And you know what he meant? He meant killing me, killing everybody in the room. He didn't give a damn. He, he was sick by what he was saying. We sense that death is, is imminent and soon. You know what I mean? It's like you smell that in the air. It's tense 24-7. You know what I'm saying? So if we act irrationally, I think he's definitely justified. And I think it's as, as powerful as the community that creates it. If somebody mentions or, or um, introduces an idea on a rap record and that becomes very popular, you know what I'm saying? Did the rap record introduce the idea to the whole people or did the society that the cat came from introduce the idea to him and then he put it on the record? Everybody's trying to rush to get glorified and have fame and money, but nobody's trying to take the time to go at it the right way. You know, they want to rush and sell dope, or rush and get a gun and rob somebody. And all that's doing right there is just taking chunks out of your life. If you like it. I think a lot of times we're, we're risen in neighborhoods where there are things that influence us to go certain ways and a lot of times we live in, I know I personally, I grew up in a neighborhood where things were, were very violent and, and, and things did not go, so to say, the right way. But I was risen a certain way so I never knew the so-called right way. I come to the conclusion I'm not born to be, I is, you know what I'm saying? I'm born to die. I may have just been coming from my hood leaving all the folks that around me that claim to be this and that, so I'm coming from their perspective. Don't nobody be born just ready to, you know, to shoot somebody up or all this anger. It's just brought from the streets, period. You can try to be good as you can, but if you out here in them streets, you know what I'm saying? You gotta handle it daily, whatever come to you, no matter what it is. Around here, basically, the, the shooting is over drugs and gangs, you know what I'm saying? With the rise of the drug economy, you know, this is an untaxed, unregulated economy. Uh, so the only way you can protect yourself is to be violent. You've got to have credibility. You've got to have force, strength, and respect on the street. So what you do is you get this celebration of violence to gain credibility. Well, I myself gang bang because I guess there's a more of a power trip. I just wanted to be somebody. In, in a place where you're taught that you're not nobody. You know, you're in school, you're taught like no, like you're just a nobody. And by gang banging, you get more of a reputation. The more you do, the more dirt you do, the more you hurt somebody, the more you hurt other people, the bigger reputation you have. And it just, you know, it's basically like, it just wants you, you just want to always feel like you're part of something. I used to be on the street, I had to hustle to make a living, you know, I had to, you know, my mother, she, you know, she had to quit her job because I was going through so much, I had lost my eye, she had to go to court for me, I got two other brothers, you know, she had to go to, she had to quit her job, and once she quit her job, you know, next you know, the state had to, you know, had to take over, so, you know, they, she's on welfare now, so, I, that wasn't enough money to support all of us, so I had to, you know, resort to the crack sack, so, you know, 
which every youngster in the ghetto, you know, had to probably do. You know what I'm saying? If they didn't have no family who had a good job doing something, bringing home some money. So, you know, I had to resort to that until I got into this game. I was like, well, you know, I just put some of my lifetime experiences down on tape. And, you know, people jumped on it like, yeah, that's where I can relate to that. Like, you know, he coming real like, so, you know what I'm saying? I had to drop the sack. Like, you know, now I'm in this business now and gonna try to strive to the top, you know? Crack cocaine hit like a firestorm. It was profitable, highly addictive. Uh, people wanted it, people had smoked it, became instantly addicted, and very profitable. Therefore, uh, it was worth being organized, worth you know, getting together and, and making the profit and making the money. So profitable that it became important to protect your territory. This is a uh, shotgun, they call it street sweeper. It's capable of shooting uh, 12, I believe 12 rounds of uh, shotgun round. This is a uh, NWA told you about what was going on in the hood. It told you there's people selling rocks. It told you there's people doing this, the jacking cars, all this stuff. And now this parent is going, wow, I didn't know this was going on. Do but we want to like, change, this would end up, do we NWA change what's going on NWA. in the hood? Do we want to change what's going on in the hood? Do we want to take that information and say, I didn't know this was happening? Not rapping about it ain't going to change it. The cocaine so, is still going to come in. Ain't no rapper bringing all them, them but once you tons hear that of rap keys. I mean, you may have somebody with seven, no, somebody with five keys, two keys, and that's a lot for a D-boy in any area. You know what I'm saying? But now it's, it's people just with, with white collar shirts or coming with, you know what I'm saying, whatever style they want to come with, that's, that's bringing over straight truckloads of of marijuana, guns, get everything. I'm not, I don't know, I don't know how to make no guns, but now, you know what I'm saying? But you're rapping about them. What is gangster rap about? Well, I think the term gangster rap came from the media because, you know, as far as their information, they not really going to the streets and hitting it with the people that's on the streets, you know what I'm saying? Then you know a lot of our music, as far as rappers that they say that's doing gangster rap is about either violence or the streets or sex or drugs, but now that's the life we're living in. If you don't understand a culture, what's, what, what, what came out this culture, what made people start to speak these things, how could you label it? You know what I'm saying? They label something they really don't know nothing about, so if you don't understand it, you gonna label it something the way you feel, so they feel it's just gangster rap. Violence in movies, they don't call it gangster movies. You know what I'm saying? Violence on the news every day, they don't say it's the gangster news. Cause you know I got to stay fatty, man, about the, everything I do. Cause now, days, niggas be trying to take you for your papes. On the Willie block, I kept a Glock in the clutch, man. Because I had to bust caps at a nigga dope. But check this out, I'm climbing up in that window, ho. Like a motherfucking Geo Wood. Cause you know I'm kind of good with the styles that I kick, man. Yeah, the beat is kind of saucy, but niggas gon' sit back. This man. whole thing about the hood. Is this something that we're glamorizing? I mean, because it wasn't everybody in the hood is not a drug dealer. Everybody in the hood is not a pimp. There are a lot of people. Nah, in fact, everybody the in the hood is feeling the pressures of the dope game, whether it's uh, their mama, their uncle, stressing off their cousin, everywhere. you know what I'm saying, whatever, walking down the street and just getting beat up, jumped because jump you ain't from here, you ain't from there. Not a, You can't go to school and learn if you ain't got a... Uh, uh, you can't feel comfortable. If you, yeah, if, I'm not standing up in front of nobody with wings, pro wings on. I ain't flying up out the room, you know what I'm saying? This, is, this goes out to the school district, and everybody treat us like aliens. This with this guy too. Fuck you! <laughs> when you walk in the front door, the first thing you see, security guards and a metal detector and an x-ray machine for your baggage. So the whole thing has the uh, aura of a, a police force. So we begin to get into this whole security culture that we begin to take for normal. So there becomes kind of a normalization of the security culture and therefore sort of a normalization of violence. I think that's what you're seeing reflected in, in the rap, in the rap music and the rap poetry is that uh, 
we in America have no longer uh, provided safe streets or safe school corridors for inner city kids. Mm -hmm.